What's going on guys? Mornings, Teller Chasers again, or maybe it's afternoon where you're watching this. I don't know, but it's my morning where I am. Uh, this is part two of Steelhead Meat Carp. I am uh, really pumped to, to do this series. Uh, I'm getting good feedback. Thanks everybody for commenting and sharing it and liking it. I appreciate that. And uh, if it's morning coffee as usual, I start this day off, uh, this is number three. So it's already, it's already been a good day. Oh yeah. So today, I'm going to do two very, very iconic flies. Um, for steelhead, I'm doing the gold ribbed hare's ear nymph. Probably the most popular fly uh, for trout. That's an awesome one for steelhead. I'm doing that one. And the most iconic fly for carp is the swimming clouser. This is a fly that started all the carp scene back in the early, back in the mid late 90s. I want to say around there, 90 to 97. This is the fly that started it all. Now they sound totally different, but they're they're very similar in how they're tied. They both use rabbit as a tail, dubbing for a body, uh, a wing case. Um, this time I'm gonna use uh, peacock curl. I like the shimmer of the peacock curl. It's got some shine, plus it's natural. And then and the hair's there, that, that's pretty much it. But the swimming nymph has some uh, a hackle for her legs. So let's get started. So on the hair zero nymph, I'm using a number 10, 3X heavy mustad uh, nymph sprout hook. I like the 3X because I also use this fly also for carp. Uh, so that I don't have to worry about them. Uh, and it's a little bit heavier. It's a little bit heavier so it gets down there a little farther. And then I'm going to use a uh, 5 32nd gold bead. Um, I kind of mix them up. I tie this fly in, this is going to be in a uh, brown olive. I also tie it in a black and in uh, a tan. But the brown olive seems to be the best one and this gold bead matches that perfectly. And then here's the tan olive in regular. I'm going to do it in hairline dubbing. And then in the front of it, underneath the wing case, I'm doing a ice dub in olive brown. Which I also like very well. Gives a little spot in it. So if you have some dirty water, um, this UV... Uh, ice dub, sorry, the ice dub, not the UV. The ice dub will help uh, make that pop. And then I'm using some uh, natural grizzly um, cross cut rabbit. I find the regular cut rabbit too bulky for this fly, so I like the cross cut fibers. It's a little thinner. You can make it a little better tail and make it more, um, makes it move more in the water. And then, of course, the oval French uh, tinsel for the ribbing. And as I said before, some peacock curls. So this is the gold ribs here of your nymph. Beads already on. Number 10, like I said. And brown thread. Start a little base here. A little, little taper. Little rabbit tail. You don't need a whole lot. Well, I don't usually go like I don't know. Same diameter as like a pin would be. Well, about that much, I guess. Yeah, about that much of a tail. And you only want the length of the hook shank. Just tie that in there. Hook shank length, about that much. Tie it in, tie it in here, and then we'll just wrap it back. Cut off the height. I'm gonna make this look pretty. This right now looks like a hot mess. I'm gonna tie that down. Make it look presentable as a fly could be. Then we take our gold tinsel. that down at the just before the bead I don't know pick up the thirds probably the front third just to uh, give a belt taper again for her body now you can do this two ways you can use a dubbing loop if you want to secure your dubbing or you can use um, I find the best way since you're gonna wrap it anyways I find the best way is just to use a little bit of the wing wax. Wrap it on there just a little bit. Get tacky. Take your little 
dubbing. Spinning on there. Like so. The speed's kind of oversized for this fly, but I like it a little better so it can get down there faster so it sinks better so you don't have to use like, any weight if you don't have to. And you just wrap a body. Maybe a little bit more. Touch more wax. Or they go under than over and have it too too uh, too much rabbit fur because then it's uh, doesn't always really sink as fast and then you're adding extra unneeded weight to it. So just go little by little. This should be good here. Put this on here like so. We got taper. That's better. Like so. Put that in there. And since we went this way with our thread wraps, we're going to go the opposite direction with our tinsel. You just need, I don't know, three ribs, fish, and then capture that there. Cut that off. Like that. And then you take, I don't know, four or five peacock coral strands. You don't, want to, you don't need a ton, you just need enough to get the flash. So I'm gonna take, well, you go, let's count them, let's go four, five little peacock string hurls. Just like this, five. Tie them in right by the, by the butts, but you don't want that hard piece of plastic on there. So you just tie them on the, by the butts, like so. Tie them right behind the bead, all right? That'll flare that. No problem. Cut these butts off. And then you got your wing case. Make it a little bigger because this is the part we're going to put more dubbing on. And it's going to be, you want it to be fatter, like robust. And I'll take again some wax. Put it on there. You take your UV ice dub. Stub and brown olive, a little bit more than last time. Probably like pinching a bit, like this much, right? And then we're gonna rub it on our thread, twist it on there. You want it fat, make it look like an insect. Then you're gonna pick it out, and make it look little as our legs, right? If you put too much on, you can always pull it off after. There's a bit much there, so let's pull that off. Like so. It's not your traditional hair's ear, but uh, which is the, the whole thing of fly twine. You can do whatever you want to do. So now we have our um, this fly color matches the insect in the creeks that I fish. So now we have our wing case, and then we're gonna fold over these peacock curls like so by the bead. Tie them down, and then don't throw these out because you can use it for more flies. You can probably get, you can probably get, uh, I don't know, three or four more flies out of this little wing case or uh, peacock curl for wing cases. So we'll save those for the next one. Or you can use it for the cart fly. We're going to do next. Take our dubbing brush, pick up some of these fibers, or a pit or needle, whatever you want to do. Right. Just pull those out like so. Make little legs. And we're gonna finish. And this. Uh, I find that the peacock curl, although I like it for its um, color and flash, it's not very durable. So I take a little bit of UV glue. Put it right on the wing case, and it adds shine to it. You can put it over there over the bead, it makes it more like a prominent wing case on an insect. And then uh, hit it with the light. I'm blocking the camera because I don't have a filter for this. So, and uh, it's dry. It's hard. It's rock. I love this new light.
We'll talk more about this light later in another, in another video. And this UV glue. A new one I tried this year that I absolutely love. Anyways, there it is. Wing case, hard as a rock UV, peacock, protect that peacock curl so it doesn't get uh, broken and more durable to your fly. Gold ribbed, hair's ear nymph, steelhead style. Car fly, you're up next. A bit different. So we're going to use a Mustad number six salt water hook. Uh, you can use the traditional pattern was on a 200 uh, TMC 200R, which I have some, but I don't find the wire. Uh, it's a thinner wire hook, and I like this little bit of a sm uh, faster fall for uh, suspended fish or fish are feeding on bottom, and I find the other one's too um, too thin and too light. Uh, but if you want to fish around the surface, that's definitely the hook to use. Uh, the wire is not as strong as, say, the saltwater hook, so, so I stick to saltwater hook because most of the fish I fish for are either in Lake Ontario or they just go out in the lake. you got room to find them, you're okay with the thinner wire, but if you fish tributaries, you need to have your wire so you can put the boots down pretty good. And then for the bead, instead of using a bead, we're going to use um, some bead chain in a medium in black. And basically, the, the bead chain is going to make the hook ride um, hook point up instead of hook down. Basically, carp style versus steelhead style. This is kind of where uh, the, the bead chain, the little difference in the two flies comes into play is this is this bead chain right here. And then to make sure it flips over on its eyes, sometimes you put too much material on hooks, they don't flip over all the way, hook point up. I learned a little bit of uh, 0, 0, 025 uh, lead wire on the shank of the hook to make sure it flips over the right way. And then the body, we're gonna use Rusty Brown, uh, send you a laser dub. This is my uh, one of the go-to colors. And then we're gonna use Rusty Rust Colored Rabbit Strip. And then for the hackle, we're gonna use some um, brown neck hackle for the legs. And then the wing case is gonna be the same wing case. It's gonna be the peacock curl, uh, probably like five or seven strands of peacock curl to make the wing case for this uh, nymph. All right, so now we have the swimming closer nymph. So water hook in device. I'm gonna wrap a little bit of thread base on here first. And then we're gonna take our B chain. put it here actually you can do this two ways you can either put your bead chain on now and put your lead on after or you can put the lead on now and put the bead chain on top of it so it doesn't really matter what way you do it um, I'm gonna put the lead on first and then just you don't need much you just need like a, enough to cover the hook shank like the like the shank of the hook I'm gonna tie this on one side on top of it basically right there like so and then you're going to loop it back around again, like so. And basically, you're making sure that this bead chain flips over. So I just use a little piece of lead, flat that down with your fingernails, just cut my thread. Because it wants to fall slow, right? It represents a crayfish, could be a nymph, could be a dams of fly, it's kind of a generic pattern, same as the gold ribbed hairs years here. That's why this is such a, these two patterns are probably the patterns of be all patterns for both species. And then you tie your bead chain in pretty far back, maybe a third-ish, then figure eight it, and then wrap it underneath. And then continue back to the tail. And then, we're going to invert this fly, but before I do that, I like to tie the tail in so I can get the tail down farther on the shank so I can, when it flips over, it sticks. If it sits at the bottom, the tail kicks in the air. So, we're going to take a little bit more than we did on the other fly because it's a bigger hook. Probably, I don't know, double the amount of the last fly. About that much. About, about this much. And then it's probably the length of the, from the bead chain back to the shank. And then we're going to tie it in right there. And then we're going to cut the hide off. We don't want that on there, but it just makes it easier to tie it on and hold on to it. Cut that right there. Drop that there. 
wrap this on here, and then we're going to wrap it down so that the rubber fur straight down basically on the shank hitting the vise. That's our tail, like so. Right? Then we're going to wrap back up to where the lead met, build up a bit of a taper, and then we are going to make the dubbing loop. Because there's no rib on this. You could rib it if you want, but I want the fly to be kind of, um, I'm going to invert it, to be pretty bulky so it can make it look like a crayfish or it can look like a uh, dancer fly nymph, a hex nymph, pretty much any color you want to mimic, whatever you want to mimic, it'll do that for you. So this is a rusty orange color. I'm going to go about back here, about where we're going to put the thorax. And then I'm going to take my laser dub and rusty bronze. And we're going to take a pretty good chunk of it. Probably about yay. Probably about yay much. But this much. I'm going to put it in there. We might need a bit more. And double loop. Yeah, we need a bit more. Because you want it to fall slow. So this hook is a lot thicker, so you need to put a bit more on there so that it falls super slow. And flutters in the water and the carp cannot resist it or if you get enough dubbing in there you can actually almost get it to f not quite suspend but fall so slow that it can't resist it and then you just spread the dubbing thinner it here flutter at the head kind of taper it before you even start doing it put it in there and give her a spin and there is our spin and there's our body Ready to go. Okay, let's wrap this on here. Good old rotary vice. Love them. Love this vice. Wrap that on there like so. Building taper as we go forward. Pretty much where we left our thread. Right behind the eyes. Right there. We're going to do that. And this. And this. And then we're going to cut that off. Now the hook points up. Now we're going to tie those peacock curls we used from the last fly. We're going to use the same peacock curls for this fly. They're, they're ready to go. It's got the right amount. We are going to put them right on top where we cut off there. And you can cut the chims off or you can tie it in the fly. I like to add a little bit in the fly so it adds a bit more taper so we're not having to build so much dubbing up later. Peacock curl. And it goes. Next is our hackle. I use a brown bard. I use pretty much bard on all my hackle flies, or on my flies. I like the two tone color at least. And then we're just going to strip a bit back, like so. You know, you hold up. We just need like three, four turns probably. Tie it in by the tip, right behind the eyelet. Wrap it back. I was wrapping it in the tip and coming back all the time. You're also re-securing those eyes, so make sure they're not going to move anywhere. Save adding glue and stuff later. Okay, so we're going to clip that back here in our little spring. Clip that in there. And now you can either make a letter dubbing loop if you want, or you can just dub it on here. But I'm going to uh, I'm going to make a letter dubbing loop. Not quite as big as the first one, but big enough. And then go to it behind just behind the hook eye. Same dubbing, not quite the same amount, but a good bunch. You want about it? You want a fat head? Probably about yay much. Put that in there like so. This is not the tip of this because you just want it to be, to be bulky on the head. Make a big thorax. Spin that. eyes behind it in front of it make sure you get the eyes on there we'll cover the eyes and we'll thin this out a bit but probably a bit too much on here right here like this take my brush brush that out there we go and 
And that was like that. Hold that down. Like so. I'm gonna trim that off. Clip this head a bit. Oh guy. Okay, now we're going to take our hackle feather. I'm going to make sure that the shiny side is out instead of the flat side. So when you wrap it on, the legs go backwards. So we're just going to wrap right behind the eyes, like two or three. It's enough to make it look like it's got legs. And then I like to come in the top over the wing case or over the beads and then wrap it in there again. And then trim that off right there and then you can pick them out and then this is the part you have to trim separate the legs so I'm gonna put half on one side and half on the other side so like like that we're separating the legs on both sides and then we're gonna take our peacock curls and put it right over top on the shell, the shell back on the head make sure they're not Overlapping, they're kind of side by side, like so. There's our wing case. And then I'm gonna wrap those down right there, and that is our swimming nymph for carp. This is the carp fly that started the carp craze in the states back in the mid to mid mid to late 90s. Swimming closer. This is a little bit different than the original, but. Uh, the hook point up is definitely the way to go. Um, just so you don't have to worry about, uh, if you're fishing on bottom, you don't have to worry about getting snagged up or getting weeds or anything else. 95% of my carp flies, maybe more than that, are all hook point up. Got that right there. Same as the last one. The peacock curl is awesome, but um, a little bit of UV glue goes, doesn't hurt. Put it on there, protect it from getting beat up and last longer. And then just put that on there, like so. Little on the thread wraps at the same time. Build up a little wing case. Shell back. Right? And then hit it with the UV light. And it's dry. There is the swimming closer nymph. Gold right here, nymph. Swimming closer, steelhead meat carp. And that concludes our part two of steelhead meat carp. Uh, gold rib here, Zernev meets, I guess, the uh, swimming closer. Both two iconic flies from both each species. Uh, gold rib here, Zernev's nymph's been around forever. Closer nymph's been around since the uh, mid to late 90s. Uh, guys who fish carp know those flies, probably the first fly you ever tied. Uh, it's productive in every water I fished it. Uh, bronze color, uh, olive color, um, tan. It is it's a go-to fly. Same as the Harry's Air Nymph, you can tie it in that same color I tied today, or black, or uh, olive, or natural. Uh, hands down, the probably the most popular flies to tie for each species. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we're out.